So here we are, example 11 in our differentiation topic, and we've got to some new trig functions. Well, I call them new, but they're not really new. They're just a different way of writing some old ones. Um, so we can, if we ever co come across a function where we've got cos x in the denominator, 1 over cos x, we can rewrite that as sec x. If we've got 1 over sine x, we can rewrite it as cos x. X and similarly with 1 over tan x, we could replace that with cot x. It's more a simplifying process. It's a, the equivalent, uh, effectively, of, of rewriting a, an index, a negative index with, a, uh, with positive indices and things like that. So it's, they're not new functions. It's just a different way of writing uh, the same ones in a simpler form. The kind of interesting thing I always thought, and it helps me kind of remember which is which when it comes, I mean, cot x, uh, is different enough that because 1 over tan x, but you notice we've got sec x and cosec x, very similar, and you would think that cosec x is actually 1 over cos x because it's got the cos bit in it. In actual fact, it's the other way around, uh, and sec x, um, cosec x is the one that's not cos, in other words, sine. So it's kind of weird. Um, I don't know the origins of that, and if you do, uh, you can let me know. So we can look at the derivatives of these functions and uh, you can prove them. And I might do that in a different video, but I'm not going to do it just now. What I am going to show you is the actual standard derivatives of four functions. We haven't looked at the derivative of tan x either. So these are all the standard derivatives that we can use just as the standard derivatives of sine x and cos x that we already know. Okay. So I'm going to apply d a bit of this in example 11. Uh, example 11 oops, says uh, we've got two uh, expressions to differentiate, uh, and we're going to use these new standard derivatives. The good news is we just use them uh, in the same way as we would do so if it said sine x or cos x. Okay, so for instance, in, in A, I'm going to do these in two different methods. Uh, I'm going to use the solution to A is a kind of informal rule that you may have been taught. Um, and for B, I'm going to use the chain rule, which you may already have come across. So the, the kind of informal way of differentiating where you've got a function inside a function here. So uh, 3x minus 2 is a function, and it's been applied. We've got basically a, a composite function going on here. There's a second term, a second function, sec x, which is the outside function or the second function being applied. We're basically saying here's a function, something goes in and x goes in. Whoa, let's actually try and write. Um, x goes in. It's saying we want basically 3x minus 2, and then we want to apply the sec of that function. Okay, uh, and so that's our composite function. Okay, so the informal way of differentiating that you've come across when you've been doing sine and cos would be as follows. Um, you're going to do the outside differentiation first. Okay, so the outside differentiation would be to deal with sec of something. So going back to, what did we say? Sec x here is tan x sec x. That's the, the, the derivative. So that's what we're going to uh, write in here. So sec 3x minus 2. Uh, oop, becomes, uh, and I'll put uh, dy by uh, dx is equal to, so what we're saying is going to be uh, sec x doesn't matter which way you round it, tan x, so I said tan and sec, but obviously it doesn't matter which way around. I'll go because of products. Okay, so we've got sec x tan x and of course, instead of x in the middle, we're, we're still keeping the inside function 3x minus 2. So that's the first part, which is to do the outside di differentiation. It's just unusual. Uh, this is the first time that our derivative has two uh, separate terms multiplying. Okay, You've got to put the 3x minus 2 in them both. What we haven't done yet is actually multiplied by the derivative of the inside term. 3x minus 2 differentiates to 3. So we're multiplying by the derivative of the inside term, which quite easily s simplifies to just then 3 sec 3x minus 2 multiplied by the tan of 3x. 
and he's two, and that's it. Okay, uh, so although it looks it's slightly more complex, we're still uh, applying that informal chain rule. What I'm going to show you then is we're going to look at the solution to uh, this. Uh, let's put the um, look at the y then. Here's what we're doing. We're saying y a function is equal to cosec of cos x. So we've got an inside function and outside function. We've got a composite function. Um, and because it's a wee bit more involved, I'm going to use the chain rule. Now, the chain rule basically says here that dy by dx, the derivative, is equal to the derivative of y to another variable, which I'm going to call u, multiplied by du by dx. Now, as a fraction calculation, you can see that uh, the if we were multiplying those two uh, fractions together, the du's would uh, divide through to 1, and we would end up with dy by dx. So we basically exploded the fraction, the dy by dx, into a product of two fractions uh, where this extra du uh, technically would simplify. So mathematically, it's correct. What we need to think about is what does that mean? dy by du is the derivative of y in terms of u. And the way we do this is we substitute the inside function, which in this case is cos x, and we define let u equal cos x. So we swap the inside function for the letter u. So that means that y is now equal to cos x u. And we've simplified it. And if we differentiate that expression, then what we've got on the left-hand side is dy by du. And we want to differentiate cos x u. Well, if we go back to the previous page and look at cos x x, we've got negative cos x x multiplied by cot x. So again, we've got two terms multiplying. Negative cos x x, so it becomes negative cos x u multiplied by cot u. I'm using u instead of x, obviously. So that's me got my derivative dy by du. Now, what we need to do is to think of the fact that we've said u here is cos x. So we can actually differentiate that expression du by dx, because we've got an x term on the right, if we differentiate, we become du by dx is equal to, well, that's something that we already know. Cos x differentiates to negative sine x. So that's fair enough. So what's going on here? We've substituted the inside function for the letter u, which has made the, the function y equals uh, just that whole bit easier. So if you have a look, we've now got y equals cos x u is a wee bit simpler to differentiate. And we've now got dy by du. Notice that that's dy by du here. So what I'm going to do is to say we know that that is, is really this expression. So I'm going to write that in instead. Okay, so what have we got? We have equals negative cos x u cot u. Okay, now let's have a look at the uh, next bit. This bit here, du multiplied by du by dx, well that's it here. So we've worked out du by dx is negative sine x, so we can multiply that expression in there. Let's do, oops, I forgot the pen. Um, we need to multiply that by what we've just worked out, negative sine x. Okay, so multiply those two together. We can't really do too much. We know that the and overall product is positive, and we've got the sine x term multiplied. I'll put that at the beginning. Now remember that u actually we have defined up here as being cos x. So we can't leave uh, our final answer in terms of u. U is just a little help, um, a little tool that we use. We always have to substitute it back in. So I'm going to substitute that. So we've got cos x, cos x, and then cot cos x. Now if 
Okay, so a wee bit uh, cramped because I've done that a little bit better in terms of space. If we tweak this along, and then you can see the answer here. We've got sine x multiplied by cos x of cos x multiplied by cot of cos x. It's a bit of a mouthful, um, and that's why we use the chain rule when it gets a little bit more complex. We assign the letter u or some other variable uh, for the inside function and then we go through the process of differentiating the two terms and using the chain rule okay maybe you want to practice a bit more of that uh, hopefully that's been uh, relatively uh, useful for you